Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. We took a little bit of a break on making some content uh, for the past few days, but we're back. And today I want to go over kind of um, my thoughts on the fuel line, uh, drilled fuel line mod and whether or not it was worth it and reviewing my experience with Derek and the tuning process. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Here we have the car, a uh, quick little update. Um, I made a quick video, you can check that out up in the top here, but we replaced our fender here with one we got from the junkyard because our old one here had a dent in it. So we did that and we replaced our front grille with the OEM black chromed out one and put some yellow emblems on to go with the whole yellow theme we got going on. So before we jump into it, let's give you guys a little cold start to let you guys hear how this car sounds. Let's talk about this fuel pipe mod. So prior to doing this fuel pipe mod on E30, I was seeing about 24 and a half PSI of boost uh, peak. Um, so about 24 flat throughout. And now afterwards on E30, I am seeing about 25 and a half. So about a one and a half PSI increase in boost and I, I wouldn't say um, you could feel too much of it. I can feel a little bit that it's like more noticeable, but you can definitely see it on the K-Tuner. I'll show a clip here right now of it going up to 25.5, almost 26 PSI of boost whenever it shifts gears. Here is where I am going to say it is worth it depending on your situation. Um, so I did this, uh, I'm gonna explain why I did this fuel line mod, um, but. All right, so I kinda wanna go over why I did this whole uh, drilled fuel line mod after I did my Type R turbo, um, because you really should do this when you do your turbo upgrade and just get it all tuned at once instead of going through a revision tune. But uh, long story short, I had to replace my feed line because it was kinked. And to replace that, I have to take the pump off and to take the pump off, you gotta break off the high pressure fuel line. So I figured while I was in there, I might as well um, replace that high pressure fuel line with a drill down one. So that's kind of why I did all that. You really should, um, in my opinion, do that line um, with your turbo upgrade so that when you get to your tune, you can tune for that line right away instead of going through what I did and doing a revision. So let's jump into the tuning process and how that was like. Um, if you're like me and you're doing this fuel line mod after the fact, um, I don't think it's worth uh, doing this fuel line mod. Now, essentially, um, it's only worth it if you can do everything at once and then get tuned for it all at once. Because I had to pay another um, 300, I'll, I'll put the actual number here, but essentially another $300 for a revision tune um, because I had a major uh, modification change. Another caveat, on 93 octane, you don't see an increase in boost pressure. It's only on E30 that you're gonna see the benefits. So keep that in mind as well. If you're running only 93 where you're at and you don't have access to flex fuel, it's not really worth doing this mod. Now, let's jump into the tuning process. So as you guys know, I am tuned by Derek Robinson over at IMW Tuned. And for this revision, uh, we did a uh, remote e-tuning. I am originally dyno tuned on this car, but I didn't feel the need to have to drive back just to get a revision done. 
Um, so I opted for the remote tuning option. And I'm gonna, essentially to summarize the tuning process, I got five revisions total. Um, no, I'm sorry. I got six revisions total um, before we called it good and everything's finalized. And these six revisions spanned over the course of four to five weeks. And this is the standard tuning process, not the expedited one. If you do the expedited one, you might cut that window shorter, but essentially what it came down to was I got a revision, um, one or two revisions every week. And the process of that tuning is as follows. For the first revision, we had a um, cold start to operating temperature log and a 15 minute stop and go traffic log, 15 minute highway cruising log, and a log from fourth gear in, from 2000 RPM all the way to red line. After that first revision, you'll only need to do the stop and go cruising and the fourth gear pull logs. So pretty, pretty simple process of sending the logs over to him. You know, you, it takes an hour total maybe to, to get those logs. So just kind of do them, you know, when you're out about doing your things. Um, he uses his own propri proprietary website. Um, contact him, he'll link you everything you need to know. And he is very quick with responding to any questions and um, very nice about the entire process. You know, if you have any questions for him, he's not gonna call you dumb or anything for asking that question. He'll explain everything you need to know. So overall, uh, 10 out of 10 um, experience with him. And I highly recommend um, getting dyno tuned if you can of course but you know his remote e-tuning process is a very good alternative you're not gonna you're not gonna be leaving too much on the table from not getting dyno tuned now let's go over the process on how to get your data logs and pull them off your k-tuner all right let's talk data logging so this process is going to apply to the v2 k-tuners but when we get over to the computer section, it'll apply there too. I'll walk you guys through how to do that for your 1.2s. But for your V2s, uh, you can do your onboard data logging on this device here and then pull the logs off your laptop or computer after the fact. So what you're gonna wanna do is when you press the screen here, you'll see here, hit that button, start log. And the way you can tell that it is logging is with that blinking red light there. Once you're done doing your log that you need to do, whether it's that fourth gear pull or that 15 minute stop and go, go ahead and hit that stop log button. And now we'll hop over to the computer where we'll plug the device in and open the K-Tuner software and show you guys how to pull the logs off of this device here and save it to your computer and upload it for your tuner to look at. Okay, so now that you have your uh, onboard logs captured on the K-Tuner V2. You're gonna go to your computer and plug in your K-Tuner. You're gonna see on the bottom left here, right now it says disconnected, we're not plugged in. As soon as it's plugged in, you'll hear the audio play from Windows saying that a device is connected. And you'll see this turn to green. Uh, that denotes that it is plugged in and K-Tuner rec recognizes it. So, this portion here is going to be for the K-Tuner V2s. After you have completed your onboard data logging, uh, you'll want to pull the file off of the K-Tuner V2. To do that, you're going to go to this top row here. And on the third section here, fourth icon, you're going to click on this and it's going to open the data logs that are stored on your K-Tuner V2. And you're going to want to pull your latest ones that you've recorded from the uh, V2. And to do that, you're gonna hit download and you're gonna see a progress here that denotes how long it's taken to download. The 15 minute ones are gonna take longer, uh, probably about two minutes, but um, once you see that complete, it'll go back to the green logging and you can close this. And if you wanna double check which log you've pulled, you can hit this play icon here and you can tell uh, by the parameters which ones you pulled. So this one was my idle log. You can see it's 
uh, vehicle speed is zero. I'm not moving, so this was me idling. And if you want to take a look for everything yourself, you can do that in here as well and view all the parameters. Um, but once you've pulled that and you've confirmed this is the right log, you're going to want to export this data log and save it so that you can uh, send it to your tuner. You're going to go ahead and come back to this third column here. And then on the second icon, it's going to say save data log. And here is where you'll want to save it to whatever folder you want. So let's go to um, documents here. We'll create a folder that says ktuner logs. We'll save it here. We'll give it a title. We'll say it's the idle log. And you want to make sure you're saving it as a .kdlg, .dlg, or .tlg file. You're going to hit save. And it's going to save there. And then email that log over to your tuner. Now, if you have the V1.2s, um, you'll still want to come over to the KTuner screen. You're going to plug in your KTuner 1.2 into your laptop and into the OBD module. And to log while you're in the car, you're just going to go ahead and hit this record icon here. And it's going to say recording down here. It's going to take whatever it needs to do. And then once you're done, Hit the record icon again, and then you can play it. Um, I'm not connected to the car right now, but you can play it to double check that it captured it. And then you can do the same process as uh, saving it. Um, hit this save, save it to whatever folder you need to do, and send that off to your, your tuner. So hopefully you found this portion helpful. Okay, realize I never closed out the video, but if you found the review of my fuel pipe and the uh, logging experience with Derek to be helpful, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and follow my social media, um, specifically my Instagram page at Q underscore media. And as a little sneak peek for the next video, or not the next video, but one of the two videos, we've got two sixty five forty tires that are about to go on the wheels that I showed you a couple of videos ago. Stay tuned for that. All right, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.